Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. I am your host, Henry Harris. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day or had a wonderful day uh, today. But today we are here with my dear and precious friend, Michelle Ramirez. She wrote a book called Becoming Unapologetically Me. You know, I was thinking about this earlier, how your book is so needed in such a time as this, because there are so many people today that are so uh, busy and occupied trying to become right. something that they are not. Right. Or they are so busy trying to impersonate or be something that somebody else wants them to be and instead of being themselves. And I know what that's like not to be uh, unapologetic with me and not living my life authentically as mm -hmm. me because I spent a majority of my life um, trying to be something that I was not. And sometimes you can get so caught up in being something that you are not or not or not living authentically as you, where you'll get to the point in your life where you will, will eventually lose who you are in the process mm -hmm. of doing that, where you start to question, who am, who am I? I'm so busy right. trying to be this person, that person. So we see this going on not only in the secular world, but even in the church world where right. everybody is trying to be like everybody else and don't realize that they themselves are unique. So that's what right. I took from your book when I read it. I think it's a wonderful book. And it's such an honor to have you uh, on the show today uh, to elaborate. I like the cover. I like the uh, crown, how you put this together. It's really beautiful. And my question is, what inspired you to come up with that title, Becoming Unapologetically Me? Oh, my God. Um, well, when I first said I was going to write my bio, although it may be short, I, you know, I haven't been on earth that long. But still, it was pretty much God. I was going to do it. And in me saying that, the following year, like you, like you were talking about how you get caught up in the social media, the likes and the clicks. I had started doing that. And then I was like, you know, God, I don't want to lose myself just being this on Facebook and for the likes and for the clicks or whatever. I want to be who I am. I don't want to just promote what everybody else is doing. And so I took a social media break and I went on a fast for like 21 days. And in those 21 days, God led me to seek out different words like a uh, critic. Um, authentic, just different words that I was able to look at. And then in doing that, praying and talking to him, okay, we're going to start peeling back the layers of who you were versus who you're becoming. Mm -hmm. And so my word for the year was unapologetic. And that's how I got my title, Becoming Unapologetically Me was really me going through a deliverance of Coming out of the shell, yeah. Uh, what people thought of me, who, what they knew about me, and just accepting the crap that I went through, and not hating anybody for it, not hating myself for it, but looking at each phase of my life as life uh, lessons to share with somebody else, and just to know that I'm forgiven. And so, if somebody comes to me and say, "Hey, you were this or whatever," yes past since I was, I'm not there anymore. I am unapologetically me. Uh, what's your message to someone who may have a problem with someone who, who is authentic and real to themselves? Um, what is my message for somebody who has a problem with somebody else? That's authentic. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you don't like the person, then leave them alone. 
Yeah. Just get that on. You don't have to deal with them. If that person is who they are, you're either going to accept them for who they are or be gone. Yeah. That's how I have to look at it. Either you're going to accept me um, or not. Or you're not walking. Well, I had somebody tell me, what makes you think you have the privilege? Um, first off, I have the privilege of accepting who I want in my life or not. So I can tell you to be gone or you can stay. It's totally up to that person to say, I want you here. Or I don't have to deal with you. So if you don't want to take a person as they are for who they are, don't. That the choice is yours. That's great. Why do you think some people have a uh, a issue with being authentic to themselves? The person in general, or are we still talking about another person? Or uh, just anyone, just in general. In general. Well, I would say for the individual, like, sometimes like, it's some people want to really be themselves, but they mm -hmm. feel like they can't. Okay. Uh, how so can for that person, that place. Okay. Yeah. So for that person, I would say it's a lot of society. It's a lot of like what we were taught in our in culture, and you know, um, it's a lot of stuff that we've been we've been told that we're not supposed to do, but yet we find ourselves doing. And so when we find ourselves in a place, it's kind of scary, but it's, it causes us to fear versus sharing that side of us because we were told not to do such a thing. But you have to realize if that's who you are, you have to own who you are. And we want to be accepted. Everybody wants to be accepted for who they are. And so when you feel like people are going to reject you, you don't be yourself authentically. You find yourself sheltering parts of you when you go out in the limelight. But when you're at home, you're free to be who you are. And you're living a life that's not really authentic. You're pretty much faking it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's what um, people have problems is people be being accepted by everybody. When we have to realize you're not going to be accepted by everybody. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how you act, everybody's not going to accept you for who you are. So you have to accept you for who you are. And you're so correct. And that's a reality that many people must face is that uh, I think as human beings, we all uh, look for affirmation, acceptance uh, from people, no matter who we are, what we are. And the reality mm -hmm. of it is that you're not going to always do that. One thing I had to learn, or even as I was reading your book, one thing I had to learn was that I need to give to myself what I'm looking for in someone else. Right. Right. I think if people would do, I think your book for starters does that. Uh, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Oh, do you even like yourself? Right. I think that has a lot to do with becoming an right. unapologetic. Do you even love who you are? Right. Do you affirm who you are? Do you accept you? Do you look in the mirror and say, I, I'm, you get, I think you get my point. Um, so I feel like that's very important because if you, right. look, if you look within yourself, what you're looking for in other people, you don't have to look for people to validate uh, right. that part of you because you've given yourself that validation. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what's your what what would be your uh, your favorite chapter? Some of your chapters, uh, lots of mountains, uh, yeah. lots of hills, fix my heart. Um, these are just some of the chapters in her my book: pain, chapter. struggle, lack, all those things, uh, face. So full of tears that it began to, ooh, to swell. That was my favorite chapter, by the way. Uh, salvation yeah. and re so. Uh, sometimes I hate asking authors that question because I just became an author, as you know. And people, when I was being interviewed on television, everybody was asking, "What's your favorite chapter?" I was like, "Uh, actually, all of them." <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's, it, that's a tough, I didn't realize how I was asking all these authors these questions. And now when I was asked, I was like, that's a really tough one because I like them all, but I don't know if I could pick one that would be, but if, but if you could, which one really like spoke to you, like spoke volumes to you, as you were, as you was writing it, you just kind of got lost into it. Um... Oh my gosh, some of those uh, chapters really made me cry from like No More Tears. I mean, it just so many of them made me cry, but I would say my favorite is Salvation and Rescue. 
because yeah, coming over the hills and getting through all the tears, finding love, what it really means, and just getting to salvation and rescue, I had to go back through my life, you know, from the beginning all the way up mm -hmm. to understand what salvation and rescue really is, mm -hmm. you know, for a believer in Christ, because I didn't understand it. Like I say, I didn't always trust in God. I didn't always believe God. Sometimes I was like, is there really is a God? Because, I mean, I went through a lot. Like, how do I trust in God that my mom and them talk about when I saw my mama struggle? And sometimes my mama don't even share all of her testimony. So I'm like, how can I trust in the God that my mom is talking about? And I'm like, do she really even trust in the God she's talking about? You know what I'm saying? And so when I had to go and just go in myself and just seek God for myself, I really understood what salvation and rescue was and what it is to me, not based on what the preacher says or anybody else said, but for myself. So I would say that is my uh, favorite <laughs> chapter because, again, I did not believe I had self-worth. I didn't believe I was valued. I didn't believe I was important. I didn't believe I was intelligent, all those things. But God allowed me to see that there is more to me than what I saw and what other people saw a part of me. So that will be my, my favorite. And my last question is, uh, when people purchase your book, what would you like to see them walk away with? What is your overall message you're trying to convey uh, to them? Uh, my overall message is that no matter what you've gone through, because um, we've all gone through something, no matter what mistakes you've made, that God still loves you and is up to you to own your story is up to you to look at your story as like oh, lessons. Can you, can you say it again? <laughs> it's up to. <laughs> it's I, up I to like you. I like that you said it's you up what? to you to own your story, to own your your mistakes that you've done, and to come out of the box. Don't hide it from anybody because as long as you're hiding it, the enemy has power, mm -hmm. and people can steal. You know, by the way, the influence use that crap against you because mm -hmm. that's why I call it crap on your crap mm -hmm. because that's what it is if you're if you're hiding it it's crap on your crap that you did the stuff that you did okay we all make mistakes we've all mm -hmm. sinned we all fallen short of the glory of God but God still loves us and he still accepts us for who we are so my takeaway um what I want people to take away from the book is be who you are yeah. no matter what your background is no matter what your sexuality is God loves you for who you are. He is the only person that can change a person's heart, not man. And a lot of times we get it so twisted up that when we feel like uh, people, people do, they want to change us, but people cannot change us. It's up to us and it's up to God to help change us as we go along the way. Yeah. And that's amazing. I think you did a, a great job on this book. And how can people uh, order your book? Um, the book is on Amazon. And so all you do is you punch in LaShelle Ramirez or you can punch in, um, punch in or type in, <laughs> become an unapologetically me. Um, my, I also have a daily inspirational. It's, it's called Becoming Unapologetically You, 31 Days of Daily Inspiration. Um, you can also go to my website at www.becomingunapologeticallyyou.com. And it's also on there with, along with other merchandise that can be purchased. That's awesome. And I want to say thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, to those that are listening, go to Amazon and go to the website that she had just mentioned. We'll put it on the stream right now for you to go and order that book. If you find yourself kind of battling and struggling with just being authentically you, you know, you're not alone and you don't have to do that by yourself either. Right. I mean, as she just said, God will help you to become your become who you are, and you are unique just the way you are. Yes. And that's that's what helped me as I go to a close. That's what helped me to be, to be true to who I am. It's when I realized I didn't have to be like uh, a big name TV star right. or or be like this person. Because one thing about trying to be like somebody else is that you don't really know what. Because you're you talk about a lot in this in your book, you really don't know what somebody has been through to get to where right. you're, you can't look at me today and say, Oh, he's always been successful, or Michelle's always been, you know, X, Y, and Z. You really right. don't know what storms and what 
trauma and what pain and what turmoil and what setback that person went to right. went through to get to where they are today or to get to the place where they are authentically themselves. And I'm telling right. you, it's very liberating. And your book enhances that. And I think mm -hmm. it's going to benefit so many people. And I want to encourage you all to comment. Let us know your thoughts um, in regards to this interview. Uh, send a like, send a heart. Uh, share this video with your friends. Until next time, we'll see you next week. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. We want to connect with you. Visit us at facebook.com slash the Brother Henry and You Show. Or visit us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Henry Harris 100. We're so grateful you tuned in today and hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.